Okay, hi everyone and a warm welcome back to this next session. Now, if you've ever wondered about how old is too old to buy a boat, we have got a really special session and a, uh, a boater, uh, Mr. Henry Melgers. He is unique, I think. He bought his first boat when he was 55 years of age. And so we really want to dig in today and discuss this really important and interesting topic about boating when you're older and um, you know how old is too old to, to buy a boat so a very warm welcome to you Henry. Thank you Diane. it's a pleasure being here to really discuss the topic of an older person buying a boat I think it's really a relevant one for many of us. Absolutely and you know particularly it's a first time boater that's buying a boat so it was um, delightful to come across your story you know a few weeks a few weeks ago so when you um, started out, you were 55, What did you have any questions in your mind about your age or did it not really come into it? Uh, to an extent that really goes back, you know, what I wanted to do when I was younger, you know, you're raising a family, you've got to get a career, you want to get that out of the way and then you go through a personal relationship crisis. And then you start really thinking, what have I always wanted to do in life? Now, luckily, I sailed a little bit in my teens in, a, in an FJ for a year or so, and then I sailed for a number of years in San Francisco Bay with a friend of mine on a, 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 a 39-footer, you know, for a couple uh, years. So I got a good, good feel for it, and that really boils down to you want to get a boat. Why do you want a boat? What do you want to do with that boat? Now, as you get a little bit older, that becomes even more critical because people might have the chance that to say make a semi mistake and then correct it. And by the time you want to correct it, you may be too old to do to follow your dreams. So I had some a very good friend of mine who was a sailor, and uh, I got a lot of advice from him. He used to sail in Hawaii for years. So we looked at that and um, okay, what I really want to do, I want to buy a boat that's capable of sailing around the world, and that was my critical requirement. And luckily, I found a broker who fully understood that. He was a no nonsense guy. I have a lot of respect for him. We went through a couple boats, evaluated, and they started re doing the research on the boats. So we got a, a Cal 46, a catch, you know, a catch is one, a boat that has two sticks on it or two masts with three sails. A little, you know, more to handle, but we got that. So I got that on my own. Well, wow, so, yeah, that's cool. So, and you were 55, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's cool. And, and, I might later ask you, you know, how long you've owned your boat, but we won't we won't let people do the maths right just now, right just now, right? Still because own, I still own Dreamcatcher today. Oh, you still own the same boat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and all I'll say at the moment is that that was quite a long time ago, wasn't it, Henry? So like it wasn't last year, and uh, wasn't last year. Okay, so um, so you know, I, I like what you said that you know it's probably you know more important when you're a little bit older that you get the right the right boat i'm really intrigued by your comment about you wanted to sail around the world now did you get people sort of raising their eyebrows and saying why would someone buy their first boat in their 50s and expect to sail around the world you know how's that ever going to work well just explain you know what you've been up to i think that's a very good question mm. i think something thought i was absolutely out of my ever loving mind there's no mm. question Others, older people that I knew that also had boats, they get, yeah, it's, you're okay, it's okay. And I, we'll go through it later on what you look at. And I thought, that's okay to do. So I wanted to follow my dream. So, and, so if people think you're crazy, it doesn't matter. I want to okay. do what I want to do. And you look at all the options, you look at all the risk factors, which it is anytime you buy a boat, I don't care how old or young you are, there's always a risk factor involved in boating. It's like driving a car. That's, a, that's also a risk factor. So as you get older, you really look at that a little bit more carefully. So what are some of the risk factors as you get older? You know, what are some of the things that you need to think about a little bit more? For, you know, uh, you've got to be physically able to do this. You cannot have major diseases. You've got to make sure you're healthy. That's really important. And it all depends, you know, uh, your attitude. What do you want to do? Uh, does your partner want to do this also? I wasn't married at the time. And I found my partner like eight months after I got the boat. Glennis, who's a, she's a captain, you know, she's a, a massive, like 30,000 miles of sailing experience. So 
that we've been together sailing and living ever since. <laughs> yeah, Christ, Christ, yeah. And yeah. so you look at you know, the partnership, which is really important, and then we looked at, okay, just the two of us were going to be on the boat because we never had crew, ever. We always ran the boat together, the two of us. And, you know, and we sailed, you know, all the way from San Francisco, as far west as Singapore, as far north as up to Burma, and as far west as the Andaman Islands. Oh. Always the two of us, never crew. Okay. Okay. Just, so, oh. yeah, so your health is one thing, like you said, you know, no major sort of diseases. How important is strength? You know, like I've noticed as I've got a bit older, you know, my, you know, my muscles and stuff are not as strong. How important is strength and, and like keeping fit? Well, I, I still keep fit. We exercise quite a bit. And our sailboat is full manual winches. We don't have any power winches. Okay. So we have to crank everything by hand. Okay. And I can still do that very well. I can still trim the sails, pull them down. It was not as easy as it was 10 years ago, but we're still very capable of doing that. And this is one of the things you look at on a yearly basis. Am I physically able to continue, continue not my, put myself at risk or my partner? Yeah. That becomes, those are the critical questions. Okay, okay. As you ate, but right now, you know, we still sail a lot. Uh, we don't do night sailing anymore like we used to. We used to sail a lot from Singapore all the way up to Phuket, straight through two nights open ocean, which is fine. You know, and we don't do this anymore because during the nighttime sailing, you miss so much beauty that this whole area has to offer. From Lang you know, Phuket or Langkawi on north, it's fabulous sailing. So we decided let's start sailing during the days now and not okay. night anymore and enjoy the scenery, enjoy the bays. Get a Beautiful way to bait the anchor, throw the kayaks overboard and enjoy ourselves. And that's how we sail now. It's Fabulous. Not there is lost too much beautiful sights. Right. That, that's cool, yeah. So you mentioned before that you ha had had quite a bit of boating experience before you bought your boat, but you just hadn't owned one. Did that make a difference, you know, to perhaps someone, you know, being an older boater? Yeah, because, you know, it's always nice to be crew on a boat. You don't have to worry about it. You just enjoy yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know how that works. And as you get older, you say, okay, I have to buy one. I got to be able to run it. I have to be able to maintain it. So I gained a lot of knowledge. Now, unfortunately, I was never a mechanical guy. I'm a business guy, business degrees. So I was never a mechanic. I never used to work on my own cars. So once you get a boat, you start learning a few things like, you know, electrical system, electronics, plumbing. Nice. You know, engines, it all becomes part of it. You're not an expert at it, but you get to the level where you learn how to problem solve. I have a brother who's an engineer. He gave me some very, very good advice. He goes, something's not working. Is it plugged in? Is there a fuse? Did you check the fuse? You know, the very basics, and then you start working your way up, and that has helped me tremendously over the years. Okay. And the other thing it does is if you're working with a mechanic, you can talk to this mechanic semi-intelligently, yeah. And then they, they treat you differently. When they know that you know a little bit, they have a whole different attitude. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that makes that makes that makes a lot, lot of sense. Yeah. So is there anything that you wish that you had known before you bought your first boat? Perhaps more as sort of you know, two things. One as an older person, but one just generally as a as a boater. Okay, I think it goes back again to you know what why do you want to buy a boat? And what you really, really want to do with it. And that becomes the criteria, what you do from there on out. That's the number one foundation, in my opinion. So you start doing some research on boats. You start looking at the web. You start finding, you know, uh, finding people. And I wish, in some ways, I had done a little bit more of that. But we wound up buying an outstanding boat, a boat. They only made 122 of the Cal 46s. You know, lapboard design, she's a three, uh, three quarter keel, solid fiberglass, overbuilt, a little bit on the heavier side, but then it, on the rough weather, you have the jewel. So that became really important. And I started to look at that, you know, safety of boats. Uh, are they really designed to go where you want to go? And the cows certainly are. They only lost one cow in, out of 122 built. Wow. Because the guy was, he ran on a reef and he wasn't supposed to go out. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, so what are some of the issues that um, that perhaps uh, you know you might face if you were if you were going to buy a boat, say in your in your sixties, that you wouldn't 
face if you were going to buy a boat in your 40s? Well, in your 40s, you really don't look at your health that much. Okay. Your, your physical condition. And I think as you get older, that becomes more and more critical. You know, we're all in the same age. You know, we're all moving on a little bit. Yeah. So you look at that very, very carefully. Will I be able to be on the boat safely and, and uh, go where I want to go? Yeah. And how did you resolve yes. that? How did you actually come up with the, the, the yes to that and did what you did? Well, you, you, know, you, you look at yourself carefully. Yeah. So you start losing a little weight, you start, you know, maybe doing more exercises. And at the same time, you say, you know what, I really have to know more knowledge. So I've got my you know, U.S. Coast Guard certification, offshore navigation. I learned, took some classes on, on boat mechanics, you know, on engines. Uh, you start learning about the electrical systems. So you look, just get books on electrical systems. There's some great resources out there. Yeah. And then electronics. That's, that's always a real fun one. Or, you know, it worked yesterday. Why is it working today? Yeah, exactly. so you, you try to get a little bit of a, a background and how to fix things. Because don't ever forget, you know, once you're out on the ocean, uh, it's a tough one because we sort of geared up our boat for that. It took, you know, two years to really prep her. And you look at the long distance sailing, and the longest stretch we did was from Puerto Vallarta to Mexico to the Marquesas, which was 27 days of open ocean sailing. Wow. Just the two of us. Wow. And you have a certain amount of spares, and you talk to your mechanic, what are the critical yeah. things that you have to have? Yeah, you know, like you know, impellers and you know the basic things that many people you really, really don't think about. Yeah, yeah. So having so, your, sorry, so 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 very yeah. So having you know, you met your wife after you'd owned your boat for eight months, and she was a very capable and competent sailor. So that must have really helped you to gain your confidence as a first timer, did it? Yes, it did because at that Glennis at that time had a lot more knowledge about sailing than I did. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And the good part is she also had the same attitude: be safe, be careful, do the right things, don't take shortcuts. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we sail even today. Yeah, yeah. So if it had been two first timers, you know, if it, if it was you and your wife, do you think that you would have been able to go as far as you had as sort of a, an older first time boat buyer? So, you know, if it was you and, and, and a first time boat buyer partner, um, would it have been different? No, I think it would be exactly the same thing. Yeah, that, because okay. You, you buy a boat because you want to follow your dream. You yeah, know yeah. You, know, you want to do something. You go and do it, right? Yeah, yeah you, you go. become great about that yeah no, no no that's good so are there a particular boat that you would recommend is better for someone who's a first timer if they're a bit older or is it you know there's some boats that you would you would buy and some boats you wouldn't or not really the reason not really is it all depends what you want to do what you feel comfortable yeah. with and if you want to do long distance sailing anything in yeah. between about a 39 and a 45 footer is an ideal length that's something two people can manage Yep. You know, ours is 44.6 or 45 foot. So we can manage that. So you look at that carefully. And then the question is, do you want a sailboat? Do you want a powerboat? And it all comes back to what do I want to do with a boat? And that really determines some of these options either way. Uh, I still like a sailboat because I still have the biggest thrill when I'm out sailing. I stand on the stern on the back and I see all three sails out. And I'm still at awe, like, wow, this is what's moving. You know, this 20 ton boat. Wow. And all, every time wow. I look at that. And you said, this is oh, wow, fantastic. Yeah. I still yeah, have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. So, Henry, why did That's it take you so, so yeah, why did it take you so long to get your first boat then? You know, did you get the bug like, did it take you a long time to get bitten by the sailing bug or? Well, at, my, at the time I was married, my wife, she done want to do anything with a boat, you know, this is your crazy dream, you don't want to do that, and somehow after 20 years we split, and okay. then, you know, I was up on my own, and then, and then my dad passed away, okay. and that woke me up, like, uh oh, my dad just passed away, what are the things that I want to do, and those, that really became the driver, and it came back to, you've always wanted to own a boat, you always want to uh, circumnavigate the globe, so I could go, you know, I think I'm going to do this. So I started doing all my research into the type of boat I wanted to get. And that's amazing. And how old, were you, how old were you when your dad passed? Uh, my dad passed uh, 
a few months before I, my dad passed away and three months later four months later i bought the boat okay so, so pretty, pretty pre yeah so so okay it wasn't like three four years of thinking it was like bang this is what you know yeah, yeah. okay that's 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 pretty Financial, you know, yeah your budget what's going to be the retro the refit and so on and uh, yeah I okay annual, you look at your budget yeah really well for what i got Okay, I okay. Still sell it for more than I paid for it at this point. <laughs> yes, indeed, right? Yeah, indeed. And you've had it for like you've had it for more than 10 years, haven't you? Now, I've had the boat now for 21 years. 21 years. Well, your first boat for 21 years. That's that's extraordinary, really, isn't it? That shows a really good buying decision. Well, um, there's also it's a very solid boat because I'm only the second owner on it. Okay. And she had fifth or she had her 45th birthday. 45th birthday wow yeah that's well wow, that's that's amazing that's amazing yeah they are amazing you know build older boats if, yep. you know, like, yeah boat designs. Yep. so how's the future going to pan out henry so you know you're, you're now sort of you know a bit older than you were when you bought your boat 20 something years ago so how's how do you feel or, or give us some give us a little bit of an idea of what you think the boating future is going to look like and how is it going to you know assuming you you know you live to to your ripe old age how, how's it going to go how's your boating lifestyle going to go do you think i think it really has to do with your mental attitude number yep. one number two your physical physical ability now we may not want to go around the world at this stage yep. we may want to be you know just you know still we always sail you know for a couple months in thailand and like Cali every year, except for nothing with this year because of the COVID, unfortunately. So, you know, you come back, you say, you know, try to minimize night sailing. We'll do it if we have to. Yeah. So you, you really want to enjoy the boat. You can still do it. Uh, we look at the weather carefully. We still sail as much as we can. Or, you know, sometimes you get lazy, you turn the engine on. Yep. That's, you know, we got yep. you know, 1,100 mile range under power if we have to. Yep. So we're pretty okay. So you look at that carefully. And it really has to do with your physical ability more than anything else. Are you getting into diseases where you shouldn't be out? So I sort of look at that every year we talk about it. Are we still physically capable to run the boat safely? And that becomes the big question okay. more than anything else. Okay, okay. And so do you sort of ask yourself that question every time you're on the boat or is it something that you do on New Year's Eve and, and, and sort of your New Year's resolution? No, I don't do resolution. I used to look at it about once a year. Once a year. We go, okay. I'm still capable. Okay. Year. You know, okay. while we're still repairing the boat, am I still capable of doing yeah. a lot of things? Yeah. I try as much on the boat as I can before I yeah. bring the mechanics. So I like to know the boat, yeah. you know, which is very important. Know you, you understand your boat. Understand your boat, yeah. Do you think the boat helps you keep fit? Yes, it does, because you want to continue boating. So, you know, exercise is really important to me because I want to stay yeah. fit. Yeah, okay. Of course, yeah. I've slowed down a little bit, which is normal as we get a yeah. little bit older. Yeah. But not to the stage where you cannot, you know, uh, manage the boat safely. And yeah. that's what you really look at more than anything else as you yeah. get way older. Yeah. So how long do you think you'll have your boat for, Henry? How many more years do you think? Is that a, gold, a well, golden ball? Yeah. I want to, you know, my big goal is till I'm 80, then I'll really decide what I want to okay. do. Good. Great. <laughs> Great, and you're going to have the same boat, right? You've got no intention of changing your boat. So you would have had it for more than 30 years by that stage, yeah? Uh, the only thing, some of our sailing friends do, they, uh, you know, I'm really going to go for a sailboat, I'll get a trawler. Yeah, yes, yeah, a trawler, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think it's, um, yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. So what would be your number number one tip for someone that hasn't bought a boat before, you know, life's got in the way, or they've got a partner that isn't supportive? Um, apart from, I don't know, you know is there, are there any tips that you can provide to help people uh, move, move forward, you know, maybe apart from divorce, but, but but you know, I mean, I also understand that, you know, we, we, will, we will shift and change and when situations change, our life changes, right? So that's, it's, you know, that's what's happened in your case. But are there any tips for people that, you know, are, are wanting to do this, but haven't quite made it happen? Well, there's always two things. What do you really want to do? And then, okay, I want to, my goal is to say, you may want to scale the South African world, whatever that goal is, or, you know, both there. They have to determine, this is, what, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. 
And I'm going to start doing some research on the types of boats, routes. There's some, you know, great cruising guides that people can look at. Uh, you know, what are all these options? And then you start formulating that. And then you start looking, maybe talk to some people who have boats, understand some boats, talk, work with a good broker who is on your side and not trying to sell you something that he wants to sell, but something that you need to achieve your goals safely. So you got to look at all these options. Start doing research. I think that's critical. Yeah. Start doing some boating banking. There's amazing uh, things you can look at on YouTube and the web. You know, it's that was not available when I did the boat yeah. after this extent. So do your research. Gain a lot of your knowledge yourself. Don't rely on, you know, uh, the guy who's going to sell you a boat. Understand it yourself first. And especially if you have, you know, wander to marina and you see a nice boat, talk to the owner, see what they do with it, how they do it. That's it becomes really critical. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my advice. No, that sounds that sounds good. And what about someone who's getting older and they're starting to lose sight of that dream or they're starting to lose confidence that they actually will ever be able to, to do this? You know, maybe someone that is between fifty to sixty five, you know, what would you say to those people? You still look at your physical well being. And is that possible to follow your dreams or the interest you have? Interesting story. I remember when we crossed the Pacific uh, in Tahiti, Gwyneth had to go to Australia because her dad was passing away. And she had, had an overnighter there on the airplane. And she was sitting at a bar to a guy who was really, really depressed. He goes, what's going on? He goes, my wife just left me. He goes, you've been married for almost 30 years. We were talking about buying a boat and sailing around the world every day week of her marriage she does it and then she goes i don't want to do this and she walked away and he was just really disappointed after almost 30 years of marriage huh. he decided to leave a goal they had both planned together wow and glenn says she couldn't believe that she did this poor guy he was just t totally you know over the top yeah and i never yeah. forgotten that story told me and she has never forgotten that either yeah it's an interesting so, one yeah, isn't it yeah, yeah. And, you know, with your partner, which is really, that's not a story we won't go into, but, you know, your, your partnership that you have when you go sailing, because here you are, you know, we've been on a boat for two years in a 45 footer, just the two of us, you know, that's not a whole lot of space. No. <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. And, yeah. You know, most of the time you live on the deck anyway, yeah. you very rarely you go down below. Yeah. 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 That's sort of fun. Yeah, no, no, that, that's great. So, um, so I suppose just to sort of wrap up, you know, I mean, I think, you know, the message has come through quite clearly. It's, you know, you know, you're a shining example of someone that's followed their dreams. And, you know, whereas many uh, people, you know, you would worry about getting older, but you just blasted through all of that, um, found a really good boat and basically smashed, smashed your goals, didn't you, Henry? That, that's the key, you know, and that's why the boat's name is called Dream Catcher. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, you know nice. the story of the Dream Catcher? It comes from the Indians yeah. in the mouth of the tribe in Arizona. Do you yes. know what, what the circles mean? Um, I, I've had Dream Catchers and my kids have had them, but I'm not sure that I'm that uh, up with the story, story on it. But So now you see the Dream Catcher, you've got the web, right? Yep. So they would hang them over children's cribs. Yep. The bad dreams would get caught in the web and the good dreams that come down hold to the first nice nice and that's the same with sailing isn't it all the bad stuff can go west and the good stuff you can sail st sail straight through okay so the last yep so the last question really henry um and you've probably already covered it but um indulge me here what's your number one tip for an older person that is you know that's sitting on the fence about whether this is a crazy idea and should I do this or not? That, that requires a lot of you know, self-thinking and self-evaluation, I think, especially on the physical side. Is this something that I really, really want to do? And you do it, and then you make sure you get the right boat to follow your objective, whatever that objective is. You're you know, doing day sailing, doing overnights, or whatever. And, and that's what you have to go for. And then you do it. You make it work. You make it happen. Yeah, okay. And so the last question is, how old is too old to be a first-time boat buyer, Henry? 
if you're 80 years old, you may be just a little bit on the old side. <laughs> I don't think it's really an age anymore because, you know, our parents' generation, when you were 60, 65 years old, now you're not getting old until you're well, your 70s, yeah. late yeah. 70s. Yeah. So I think it, you really have to evaluate yourself. Are you physically fit to do this? Do you have the interest and not just buy a boat and go on, you know, one week a year? It's something you want to enjoy. That's really... Your, your, yeah, is your interest really, really that strong? Are you physically able to do it? Do you have a partner that's going to be on your side to do the same thing? Okay, that's fabulous, Henry. Thank you so much. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you again. You know, we met quite a, a long time ago. And to actually understand your story, and I was so fascinated to find out that you were a first-time boater, boat buyer at 55. So I really thought it was so important to share um, your expertise and your wisdom. So thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate you. having you. Have a great meeting. You take care. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye for now, Henry. Thank you.